Hi, and welcome back to AWS Julie. Today we are continuing our new series covering network fundamentals in AWS, and we will cover the third layer of the OSI model, layer three, the network. Please remember to share this video with anyone who may be interested. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, sub if you love it, and let's dive in. So we're diving deep into the OSI model and we're learning about layer three, the network layer, which is responsible for moving data from the source to the destination. Layer three is important as your network grows or to move data to another network. So now your data is moving out of your LAN to a separate network. At this point in our network, LAN one and LAN two are separate networks. Devices in each LAN can communicate with each other, but they are isolated and cannot communicate outside of the LAN. Currently our LAN is joined by a direct point to point link and is using the same layer two protocols to communicate but not all layer two networks use the same protocols and this presents a challenge. So how do you communicate outside of your LAN? Well, there are different locations spread across the country and between these local area networks are point to point links. Maybe these point to point links are cable connections that are using layer two connections through ethernet or satellite and so on. Long distance point to point links also use PPP, MPLS, ATM, and these are more suitable protocols, and all of these use frames with a format. So we need a commonality between multiple different local area networks known as internetworks. You need layer three. Layer three uses common protocols that can span multiple different layer two networks. Adding a layer three network to your current layer two network adds an internet protocol, and this gives you IP addresses which are cross networking addresses, which you can assign to devices. And then you use these IP addresses to communicate across networks using routing. The internet protocol is used to send requests across the internet. IP packets are moved from source to destination through many intermediate networks. And the data is encapsulated in different frames along the way using routers, which remember are layer three devices. Routers move packets of data across different networks. Packets are encapsulated inside of the ethernet frame. When it reaches a new part of that network, the frame is removed and a new frame is added around the same packet and is moved to the next network. This is why IP is needed to connect across intermediate networks along the path. So let's take a slight dive into packets, which is the data unit used within the internet protocol. Packets are similar to frames. Packets contain data and they have a source and destination address, but with frames, the source and destination MAC addresses are usually local. With IP packets, the destination and source addresses could be on the opposite sides of the globe. Throughout the journey from your source to destination, packets remain the same. They are placed inside layer two frames. Each frame is specific to the local network that the packet moves through and the frame changes as the packet moves from network to network. There are two versions of the IP protocol, IP version four and IP version six, and each contain various different fields. And at a fundamental level, we're gonna just focus on a few fields for each. Starting with IP version four, the first I wanna talk about is the time to live or TTL. Remember that packets move through many different networks from the source to the destination. And this value here defines how many hops the packets can move through. So it defines the maximum number of hops before that packet is discarded. We also have protocol. IP is a layer three protocol and contains data provided by a layer four protocol like ICMP, TCP, UDP, and so on. And this tells the layer three network stack which layer four protocol to pass the data into. And then we have again, the source IP address, which generates the packet, the destination IP address, which is the intended destination IP of the packet. And then we have the data that is provided by a layer four protocol. Now for IP version six, this packet structure is similar. Up first, I wanna talk about the hop limit, which is similar to TTL. And it is the maximum number of hops before a packet is discarded. Again, we have the source IP address, and this is actually gonna be a bigger address, and it's gonna take up a lot more space in the packet, and that's the same for the destination IP address, 
and then again we have data from a layer 4 protocol. So let's take a step back and let's talk about what is IP addressing. IP addressing identifies a device that uses layer 3 IP networking. An IP version 4 IP address might be 130.0.0.3. An IP version 4 is a dotted decimal notation, four decimal numbers from 0 to 255 separated by dots. IP addresses have two parts, the network and the host. So the network part of this IP address is 130.0 and the host part is 0.3. So for this address, 0.3 is a laptop on the network. Using the format of IP addresses, you can tell if devices are on the same network or if they're on different networks. If the network part of the IP version 4 address matches, then the devices are on the same IP network. If they do not match, then the devices are on different IP networks, and this is why it's important to know the parts of your IP version 4 addresses. Each decimal part of the address is an 8-bit binary number, so we have four sets of 8 bits, which equals 32 bits, or 4 bytes, for the IP version 4 address. If you have another IP version 4 address, so let's say we have 130.0.37.37, this address is part of the same network, but it has a different host. And if the network part matches, then it means the devices are local. But if they do not match, again, it means the devices are remote. But both of these have a slash 16 prefix, meaning the first 16 bits of the IP are for the network and the remaining bits are for the host. IP addresses can be assigned static or dynamically using DHCP, which is your dynamic host configuration protocol. And on a network, IP addresses need to be unique. Next, we have the subnet mask. And these also help us to determine if an IP address is local or remote. Again, these are configured on the layer three interfaces. Subnet masks allow a host to determine if an IP address needs to communicate with local or remote which means if it needs a, to use a gateway or if it can communicate locally. In a LAN, your local area network for your home network, the internet router is usually set as the default gateway. So if you are at home and browse to amazon.com, packets from your machine pass through the router, which is that default gateway. A subnet mask is configured on a host device in addition to the IP address. For subnet masks, when you convert it into binary, Anything represented with a 1 is the network part, and anything represented with 0 is the host part of your subnet mask. Also, for a given network, it is possible to calculate the start and end IP addresses of the network. Let me know in the comments if you want a video on how to calculate the net start and the net end for your IP addresses. But back to our video, using IP addresses and subnet masks is how the intelligence of layer 3 the network layer is used. Let's follow a packet to Amazon.com. So first we move from your LAN to your internet service provider, which is your router. Your router has the packet that has your IP address as the source and Amazon.com IP address as the destination. Your router has a default route to the internet and the packet for Amazon.com is inside your internet service provider's router which has multiple network interface cards connecting out to the internet and also to other remote networks. And the route table for your internet service provider knows where to forward your packets because the router uses routes and route tables. Every router has at least one route table with a collection of routes. When packets arrive at that router, it checks the destination IP address and then matches that route to the route table. If multiple routes match, it prefers the most specific route to send the packet. Routing is the process of routing packets from hop to hop, from source to destination, and route tables enable this transmission and can be statically populated, or you could use protocols like BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol, that allows routers to communicate with each other and exchange the networks that they know. The packets are forwarded at layer two, and then we determine the MAC address of the Amazon router using the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP. So ARP is used when you have a layer three packet and you want to encapsulate it inside a frame and send that frame to the MAC address that you don't know the actual MAC address. So you need a protocol that can find the MAC address for a given IP address. So when we send a packet to Amazon, 
Amazon is the destination of our IP packet. However, your packets are being forwarded using your default route, home router, and the default gateway. So you need the MAC address of that default gateway, and ARP will give you this MAC address for any given IP address. ARP is a process that runs between layers two and three. On your LAN, ARP will broadcast on layer two and send an ARP request and ask, who has the IP address that I need? And the ARP software will see this broadcast and respond with the appropriate MAC address and then can use the destination MAC address to build the frame, encapsulate that frame, and then pass it to layer one, which sends that raw data. Layer one hands that raw data up to layer two. Layer two recognizes the MAC address as itself, strips the frame, and passes that payload to layer three. Layer three receives the packet as the extended destination and de-encapsulates the packet. Remember that each network has a router and routers are layer three devices, so they understand layer one, two, and three. So if we wanna send a packet to amazon.com, we know that this is a different network and we can use the subnet mask and destination IP address to show that that is a remote connection and it's not local. Let's take a deeper dive into ARP. So since this is a remote network, we are sending the packets. We need to use the default gateway as our router. ARP is used to get the MAC address of the default gateway and the frame is first encapsulated and sent to the destination MAC address of the default gateway router. The router sees that its MAC address is the destination, so it strips away the frame, checks the destination of the packet, and sees it's destined for Amazon.com and has a route to Amazon.com in its route table. It will now encapsulate that packet into a new frame with the new destination MAC address for the router of Amazon. The router for Amazon receives the packet and it sees that it is the destination, but it is addressed to another device on the network. It uses ARP to get the MAC address and encapsulates that packet and sends that frame on. Amazon sees that it is the destination, strips away the frame and sees it's the destination for that packet. Routers move packets through networks by reviewing packets, checking route tables for the next hop or target addresses, and adding frames to allow traffic to pass through intermediate networks. Layer three adds cross-networking addressing, ARP that finds MAC addresses for IP addresses, routes to forward packets, route tables, and routers to move packets from the source to the destination encapsulating in a layer two as that packet moves to its destination. However, IP protocol does not provide methods for channels of communication. For a given two devices, there is only one stream of communication, and this is resolved by layer four and five of the OSI model. Layer three also cannot guarantee the order of packets to be delivered because each packet is routed independently. And if you're communicating only using IP, then you will have intermittent network conditions that may cause the arrival of your packets in a different order than the order the packets were sent. If you have an application using layer three, you need additional logic for the application to ensure those packets can be sequenced in the actual order they are sent and not in the sequence of the order they arrive. At layer three, packets can end up being missing or not delivered. This is usually caused by network conditions like we just said, outages or loops in the routing. And at layer three, there's not a method to ensure that these packets are delivered. However, in the next lesson, we're gonna dive into layer four, the transport layer and build on top of layer three. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope to see y'all again real soon.